Hi friends, welcome to my channel, Creating Inner Beauty. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about four common misconceptions about how the process of manifestation works, and then go over an example of how manifestation can actually work so that you can feel confident in co-creating a life that you really love. If this is your first time here, my name is Liz and I'm an intuitive coach and healer for conscious women. And in my work, I love empowering intuitive, empathic, conscious, spiritual women to heal their blocks, align with what their soul truly desires, step into their power and gifts and create soul fulfilling, joy filled lives. And I really wanted to talk about the concept of manifestation today because it's such a powerful um, process to know about, but it can also be quite confusing. I've seen a lot of different teaching around manifestation out there. And to be honest, sometimes some of it is so conflicting or there's so much, many different kinds of layers to it. It can be a little bit paralyzing. I remember at the beginning of my spiritual journey, learning about manifestation and learning about all this stuff where there'll be times I'd be so confused about what I was supposed to do, how to move forward, how to create the things I wanted in my life. And so I'm hopeful that this video is going to address maybe some questions that you have around manifestation and set you on the course of feeling really confident about how to bring in the desires, the intentions that you have for yourself. So let's dive in. The first misconception that I wanted to address about manifestation is that it is some kind of tool or technique that you're using in order to achieve a goal. That is not really what manifestation is. Manifestation is actually occurring at all times. You have begun manifesting from the moment you are born. And in fact, I would even suggest that we began manifest manifesting before we were born. And I will address that later on in the video. But for now, let's talk about the fact that we've begun manifesting from the moment we're born. The universe, you are in co-creation with the universe and the universe is basically reflecting back to you in your reality, all the combination of things that you hold within you, including your emotions, your desires, your wishes, your intentions, as well as your wounds, your thoughts that you're having. It's this whole mix of who you are at this present moment is being reflected back to you. So you don't really even have to think about it. Now, why is this important to know and to think about manifestation as being a process that happens at all times? That it's important to think about it this way because a lot of times what I see happening is that people are focusing on doing certain tools and techniques such as um, scripting or writing lists of what they want, manifestation lists, et cetera, instead of focusing inward on themselves and working on the mix of things that they have within them so that the universe reflects that back to them in the way that we desire. So that is not to say that it's not good to do practices and tools and techniques such as writing manifestation lists or scripting. These can be very powerful things to do to focus your intention. And um, especially when you're feeling really good and not having a lot of resistance and in a very high vibration, they are a good thing to do. However, they shouldn't be the majority of what we do when we're manifesting. And and you will find if you don't do the inner work, this was definitely my experience. If you don't do the inner work, no, many, how many, no matter how many times you do these techniques, they're not going to work as well for you. So if you instead focus on the fact that manifestation is constantly happening, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to intend um, it super specifically just by you setting your intentions once you have started the process. So 
instead of focusing on the tools and techniques, you can shift your focus to looking at what do I need to heal within me? How do I come into more self-love so I can accept all of the things that universe is going to give to me? What is it that is getting in my way from believing and receiving the manifestations of um, the physical manifestations of what it is that I want? So I point out this misconception so that you can choose to focus your time and intention on what is truly going to be the most powerful thing, which is your internal healing, rather than spending a ton of time and tools and techniques that are not going to be as effective if you don't do the healing first. Okay. So that's my first point. Second point is um, that I wanted to talk about is that manifestation, um, there's a misconception that manifestation is going to be this smooth, magical process. Now, I wish that was the case. And sometimes it is the case. If there's an area of your life and something you're wanting to bring in that you don't have resistance around, then that may, it may be a very smooth, very serendipitous, miraculous, a magical type of process. However, sometimes it's not. And here's the reason for that. Oftentimes we're looking to manifest things that we have some internal blocks and wounds around. So let me give you an example. If you're looking to manifest, manifest a deep divine soulmate love, but inside you're having trouble loving yourself. You have fears around abandonment, rejection. You're not um, conducting your relationships in such a way that where you feel um, worthy and deserving, you're settling for things, et cetera. There's a lot of stuff in there that may prevent us at first from aligning with the love that we truly want. So Sometimes the process of manifesting the love we want is the universe taking you through some healing that you will need to do in order to get to the point where you can line up with the love that you want. So that may mean certain relationships fall apart. Certain patterns are brought to your attention. Um, you may have to do some healing work that feels challenging and difficult. And it may not necessarily be the smoothest process ever. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be worth it, that it's not going to be beneficial, and that you won't have the divine beautiful soulmate love that you want, for example, in that example, it just means that it's not always going to be the smooth, easy process. So when difficulties happen in your process, do not be discouraged. It is not the universe telling you that you can't have what you want. It is the un universe leading you on the journey you need to go on in order to get into alignment with what you want to bring in. So um, another little example I can share from you for you for my own life to kind of illustrate this is I remember one year, a couple of years back, I will say maybe 2017, I made this like great vision board of all of the things that I want. I think it was around the new year. And what happened? It wasn't that they start all the things started magically falling into a place. Maybe a few of them did, but what actually happened is my life started falling apart. Um, a relationship I was in ended. Um, I uh, experienced some challenges at work. I realized I had to pull back from some friendships. They weren't going well. And there were all of these different things in my life that started to crop up and challenge me. And so luckily, I had already kind of learned that sometimes the process of manifestation wasn't completely smooth and magical. And so I knew I needed to lean into this process. So I decided to dive deep into doing healing around relationships and love. I really looked at my friendships, my boundaries, how I was, um, showing up in my relationships. I started to make some changes at work and really leaned into that. And that journey, although it was challenging, led me to manifest every single thing on that vision board. 
You know, I got, I met a new soulmate and got married. I, we moved into our dream house. I'm now doing work that feels fulfilling and that I love. And that um, feels like is giving back to me as much as I'm giving. Um, I feel very aligned and connected with my spirituality. And these were all things that were on my vision board. So I tell you this, not to discourage you, not to bring up any fear around challenges, but to tell you to lean in to the challenges, use them as learning points, as points of healing and initiation to take you deeper. And you will get to the places that you want to go in your life. Okay. Now, misconception number three. Three, um, something that I feel like I see a lot, and it's this confusion around how much action you need to take when you're trying to manifest something. I feel like there are some teachings out there that suggest that you don't have to do anything at all, that it will happen magically. You kind of just sit back and receive um, and then there are other people that talk a lot about goals and the kind of working for them and really striving and hustling, et cetera. So what I would say is it's actually a midpoint between these two things. And it's all about action that is in alignment with what you want to manifest. Okay. And so um, let me take you through an example, which I hope will illustrate how you kind of have to take action to help you align with what it is that you're wanting to bring into your life. Yet the universe has a part of it and is co-creating with you and will deliver you opportunities. So it's partially you taking action and partially you receiving. Okay. And so here is the example. I was going to go over this later, but now I think it kind of makes more sense to insert it here so you can sort of see how this all works together. Let's say that what you would like to manifest is being your healthiest, fittest self, okay? That is a very common intention people have around the new year. Now, you set your intention and... What is your role in this? What is the action you have to take? Remember, the universe is reflecting to you and giving you the opportunities that resonate with who you are in this present moment. So you have to start being a person that stepping into the you that is your healthiest, fittest self. So how can we do that? Maybe that means starting to take walks every week. Maybe you set the goal that you're going to take uh, walks four times a week, okay? You know, probably someone who's being their healthiest, fittest self is going to be doing active things, right? You're probably not going to be sitting at home watching Netflix all day. That's not really in alignment with being healthy and fit. So your part is to start doing actions and behaviors and thinking about yourself as this healthy, fit person. So one action you're going to do is um, taking these walks. Second thing to kind of pay attention to is what are your mindsets around being your healthiest, fittest self? Do you feel like it's possible for you? If not, why not? And how can you heal that? What's getting in your way? What are your feelings about yourself? Um, are, do you feel really positive about yourself right now and full of self-love? If not, why not? And how can you put yourself in your in that energy? Because, you know, probably one of the reasons you want to become healthier and fitter, fitter is to feel more confident and loving towards yourself. And so we don't want to wait for that to happen. We want to start doing that now to put ourselves in the energy of emotions and emotions of that. So that's another action you can take, right? Um, and so those are the types of things you can start doing in order to embody this, this version of you that you want to be. Now, Here's the universe, how the universe is going to come a potential of how the universe is going to come in and help, help you out. So you've committed to doing this work. You start going on these walks, right? And maybe a couple of weeks into doing these regular walks, you decide one day you feel an intuitive nudge 
to turn right on your walk instead of left. Maybe at a certain corner, you usually turn left, but hey, for whatever reason today, I feel guided, I feel nudged to turn the other direction. So you take that guidance, right? That's another action you take. You're listening for your intuition and you're acting on it. So you make that that new turn and you find yourself walking by a park. And in this park, there's this exercise class going on and it actually looks really fun. And you say to yourself, huh, like maybe that's something I could do. I'm, I'm going to try that out um, the next time that they have it. And you figure out when they have it and you decide to go to it. You go to it and it's so much fun. It doesn't even feel like exercise. And hey, maybe you even meet some nice people there. And then you start going to it regularly in addition to doing your walks. And it doesn't even feel like work. It becomes part of your daily schedule or your weekly schedule. You meet some good people there, good friends, and that keeps you accountable as well. And lo and behold, six months has gone by and you find yourself being your healthiest fittest self. Okay. And so that is a way manifestation works and the kind of action that you need to take. You're aligning yourself who, with who you need to be. The version of you who has the thing that you want is being the person you want to be. You're clearing away what gets in your way and you're listening to intuitive nudges and following them. And then the universe is presenting you the opportunities and pathways to get where you want to go. Okay. I hope that makes sense. And I hope that brings some clarity around um, the kind of action you can take and the way that the, the universe works in the manifestation process. Okay. And then misconception number four that I wanted to address, it, it took me a little while to figure this one out. So hopefully it brings, um, shed some light for, uh, some people. And it is my belief Okay, so the misconception is that you're only manifesting from your human mind and the person, the human you are right now. It has come to be my belief that you're not only manifesting from your human self, but from your higher self and from your soul simultaneously. Um, so from your human si self and from this bigger picture part of you, your higher self, your soul, um, who has an even bigger picture of your life and what your journey on earth is meant to be in this lifetime than your human, your human um, mind does, right? So to me, this is explains a couple different things. First is why we encounter some difficulties, challenges, and experiences that we say to ourselves, I would never manifest that. I would never want that to happen. I did not ask for that. Uh -uh -uh. Now, our human mind may not want those things. They may be challenging, painful, and unpleasant. However, our soul, our higher self has a much bigger picture of two things. The lessons that you want to learn on a soul level that are going to expand you and that are going to serve you over the bigger picture of your many, 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 many lifetimes. And number two, totally just lost my train of thought. Let me circle back around to that. So the uh, first one is, has a bigger picture of what you want to learn as a soul. And uh, number two has certain things that, that you on the soul level have contracted to do and learn in this lifetime, which may not necessarily make a lot of sense to our smaller human brains, but make a ton of sense in the bigger picture of soul contracts and how it is that we, like what it is that we're meant to do and experience in this incarnation on earth. And so when you hit those points, those things that you say to yourself, I did not create this. I did not want this. How is this possibly presenting this, this? How is this possibly presenting itself to me in my life? Why did I have to go through this? It is likely because there is a bigger picture lesson and learning here. And 
The second component of that is your soul wants what is best for you and is going to always want you to be expanding and experiencing more joy, love, positivity, and um, light, and all of those beautiful things our soul, our soul is actually made of. But sometimes the way to your expansion, to experiencing more of those things are through these sometimes painful lessons. So trust that as you're going through these experiences, that you're learning something on a soul level, and it's ultimately going to bring you to a better place in your life. And that is why I wanted to address that issue. So please, please, please don't get discouraged if you have challenges, if you have pain, if you have heartache. We are human. We are going to experience those things. And as I mentioned, they are sometimes part of what we came to this our incarnation to experience, but also know they are leading you to more, to better, to more joy, to more enlightenment, to more expansion, to being able to more, hold more light in your life. So I hope addressing these four misconceptions about manifestation have been helpful to you. I hope my ma my example of how manifestation can work was helpful to think about in your manifestation journey. I'd love to answer any questions you have about manifestation. So if you'd like to leave those below in the comments, please feel free to. And if you like this content and you'd like more um, content around spirituality and um, evolving and healing and stepping into to a soul-fulfilling, joy-filled life, please give me a like and follow my channel for more. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video.